All right, I have Jovan Hutton Pulitzer back. Uh, it's not been too long, Jovan, since you were with me, but since you were with me, a bunch of bombshell information has come out about the, George, the about the Georgia election. So thank you so much for joining me today. Not a problem. Happy to be here. So um, last time we spoke, the election committee in Georgia um, was just finishing up this audit and the Fulton County uh, Georgia area where District Attorney Fonnie Willis is suing Donald Trump for having the, the temerity and the audacity to say something's not quite right with the 2020 election. They do this audit and they're now admitting publicly 380,761 ballot images are missing. Right. They've, they've either been wiped or never existed. What do you suspect has happened based on all of the research that you've done? If we look at all of the states where there were any issues in 2020, they all have the same common characteristics. And since we did the full forensic audit in Arizona, we're able to know how they interrelate. So let's just talk about what is a ballot image first. You have a physical ballot. When that ballot, mail-in ballot, absentee ballot, whatever the case may be, hits that scanner, or if you're in a precinct where you walk in, mark the ballot, and it goes into that scanner, well, you now have a physical ballot. Then you have what's called a ballot image. That's the ballot image. It's the documentation that the machine accepted it. Then there are other versions. In between, you can have adjudication. If a, a ballot had to be changed for a reason, then you get a post image. Then you get it dropped into basically a text file. Then it's dropped into the final count. Now, what a missing ballot image means, and because Georgia has never seen the physical ballots, it basically means that the elected officials have no way to prove that those 300,000 ballots that they say were there and they counted ever existed. Because why? It would have an original image on the machine and it would have an original ballot. And those two things have not been discovered, shown, or turned over. So the first thing it means is, wait, there's probably a problem. And if it stands to reason like other places, the numbers are fabricated on the end. Yeah, it, it's like, oh, um, we can't find the gloves of O.J. Simpson in, you know, like the, the physical artifact isn't there. Correct. And then like, we don't even have a digital picture of Correct. the gloves anymore. So that, that, that's why I'm telling people like they, they either don't want you to see these, so they destroyed them or they never existed in the first place. Like, I, I don't know if, it, can you come up with a, another option, a third or fourth option? Well, no, by law, they actually have to have both. They have to actually keep these copies. But here's an interesting thing. I'll give it to you in Arizona terms because they probably did the same thing in Georgia because we've not been able to see the ballots. If you were to look at election day in Arizona, they have a ballot that they said people voted on election day. They don't have the pre-image, the very first image, but they do have a post image. Basically what they can't prove is that physical ballot actually ran through the system. And when you can't show it was there in its original state the same way, you can only assume they made up the ballots after the fact. And so there is no logical reason they would not be there simply because to delete any of them means you have to go in and wipe things out. Now, here's the interesting thing. They're held in batches, batches by machines. And these are spread, let's say, across 5,000 voting machines. Each batch is only about 200 ballots. So think of how many times they would have to go in and delete to get rid of 300,000 images. I'm saying it's not a boo-boo. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't sound right. The other thing that was interesting is, um, I don't know if you've heard this name down in Georgia, but Garland Favorito. I know Garland well. Okay. Uh, he, He's he my is... Favorito person in Georgia. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was that was clever. Um, he, he is saying that uh, they have witnesses that uh, are saying that there are many, many ballots where the, the squiggle mark to fill in a vote for Joe Biden is exactly the same on many other ballots. How could that be if it isn't just like photocopied or, or printed that way? Good question. Uh, we broke the story uh, now almost four years ago that the Dominion systems have the ability to fill in the oval, to actually have a default mark. In fact, just so you know, 
Uh, they have over a million unique marks designed where you can't tell the difference between them and a Sharpie. But yes, the default mark is a perfectly filled oval. Now, what happens is that's not the way people normally do it. Why? Because your hand changes the shape of the oval. Left-handed, right-handed, you're a scribbler, you're a looper, right? You're a pumper. Those are the different things. You can see all those textures in the marks. So for any successive ballots to have perfectly filled ovals, something's wrong. But to be uh, enough in density that people just looking at them or looking at the images go, wow, all of these are perfect, something's up. So it is an indicator that they may have been filled in by machine. Now, this is where it creates a problem. If these were mail-in ballots, which at that time they were dumping a lot of mail-in ballots, there's no logical reason at home that you could fill in the oval perfectly, right? So there's no excuse for that. So the second part of it, all you can deduce is only one of two things happen. Either a machine somewhere in the process inserted the oval that could be one of the used in the system or that could be printed and they shouldn't be printed with filled in ballots or the ballots themselves some way were mass duplicated and in that duplication process it looks like a lot of perfectly filled in ovals okay uh now the other the other thing that uh was brought up in this i guess uh, committee meeting where they divulged the, the results as they said, okay, we can't find 380,761 uh, election day ballot images, but we also can't find over 17,000 ballot, ballot images from the recount. Correct. So what, what, what is the difference there? And, and also like, that many missing ballots, this this election should never have been certified. Um, the, what's interesting here is in that scenario, the counties themselves, the county recorders, et cetera, election boards, they don't possess the data that they can even certify the election because they're missing. But I will tell you some commonalities. It's the same in Arizona and other states. For some reason, the election day ballot images are missing. Think of it this way. If you have all these early votes and you have all these mail-in votes and they get to start opening them 30 days before the election, but they can't count them, they still scan them in so they're ready to go. Well, if you think that's not counting, come on, right? And so if you understand they're playing a sophisticated game because they don't know what's going to happen on election day, it stands to reason that if somebody right down to the wire is going to modify an election nefariously, they can't let a uh, uh, election day ballots count. Now they take them in, but since they're playing a game of catch up to try to make it look like a race, what will happen is they'll take the real results, which have a pre-image, they'll dump all of the pre-images, modify ballots by replacing them, and then that shows a final image. But you can't have a way to uh, account it back and forth because you don't have that first pre-image. So a lot of it smacks as nefarious activity. It's certainly maladministration, not having them. Because it's repeated in such abundance, it actually leads to malfeasance, and it should be investigated. But if you can't prove that that paper hit the machine, you should not be able to count that vote. And this is why the paper is so critical. The paper is the physical evidence. Now, those images being mission, missing, say 370,000, they can say it was just a boo-boo, somebody hit a wrong button. And the fact is, the court won't do anything about it. But have 370,000 ballots that don't match or were made up, each one is a federal crime. And, and that's and you're saying in Arizona, in other places, they won't turn over the physical paper artifact. Only Arizona got the physical paper artifact which allowed us to show that the election day votes were suspended and replaced. But Arizona was the only state that allowed us to do it. We were supposed to do it in Georgia. Um, unfortunately, people talking too much uh, got the word out of how we could cross check and edit. And it made all the uh, Mark Elias attorneys go nuts, put pressure and eventually block us getting hold of the paper in Georgia. No other states outside of Arizona 
have turned over the ballots. And by the way, we're in excess of 24 months later. All of those states, and I, I include Georgia, those ballots are gone. Even though they say we kept them aside, no, those ballots have been destroyed. There's nothing to measure back to now, unfortunately. Okay. Wow. Oh, man. I mean, the the one thing that has come out of this, like you said on our last thing, is they 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 can't cheat the same way. Like it, right. it's, it's been exposed, number one. Number two, a lot of people's eyes have been opened where like I've talked to people and they're like, there, there was nothing like they repeat what the mainstream media says. There, there was, this is the, the most secure election in, in American history. And, you know, those, those same talking points. But right. um, I thought, I did think it was interesting just the, the backstory of how they ended up doing this audit was there was a guy in Texas. Correct. Guess who, who, who is it? Kevin Monkla. Yes. Yes. That's the name. Thank you. Um, I, I saw that and then I couldn't find it again. So I'm glad you had that. So this Kevin guy calls and and basically, for lack of a better word, har- harasses and, and is the squeaky wheel wanting the grease uh, over and over again to the point where they're like, we're about to get a restraining order because you've called about this fraud so many times. They finally say, let's put this baby to bed. And then boom. Almost 400,000 ballot images are missing. I mean, it, it, it's insane. And they apologize. We're, we're sorry that we ignored your calls to check on fraud for over three years. We finally check it and we find a bunch. He did freedom of information requests. Fire requests is what he did to get a hold of the information. And Georgia is one of these states that did release ballot images in advance, but did it very limitedly. What happened here is this is all a game of running out the clock. There are two federal statutes, U.S. uh, 24, uh, excuse me, U.S. yeah, U.S. 24, 1974, U.S. 42, 20-701 that says the states have to keep these things for 24 months. They play a sophisticated game of running out that clock. But here's what you need to understand. All of the great people that work these elections, they don't have to be in on it. Right. All you have to do is have access to the system. Those people think everything's fine. Hunky dory runs as normal and they're just deleting or swapping files as it happens. Remember, it's not the machine. It's the people, paper and programs. And when you have under the guise of security, people watching out for bad threats from Russia, it actually gives them access to the data and the ability to do exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, th- this coming election is going to be really interesting uh, to watch. There's a there's a big channel over on Twitter um, X with a man named Dom Luker, and mm-hmm. he said this this morning. There is a red wave coming like we have never seen before. It's bringing black, white, Latino, Asian, and Arab Americans together stronger uh, than nine twelve. So the day after 9-11, right. this is what we have been waiting for. The signs are in front of all of us at this point. Do you, do you think that's true? Do you think that the, the Republican Party that's claimed to be the big tent party is finally about to see that tent filled with a bunch of people that are just absolutely fed up with the progressive Democrat uh, radical left ideology? Uh, I think the sides are off the tent and it's now one big canopy. And that canopy has just happened because not because the GOP woke up. It didn't. It did exactly the opposite. It's people woke up. You can't hide this. And even though we had incredible uh, maladministration and malfeasance in both 20 and 22, the heartbeat that made everybody wake up is their grocery bill. When they started paying 30% more for the grocery, 50% for their more than their for their electric bill, almost double in gas, people go, wait a minute, how is this build back better? And that made them stop. The election stuff didn't make them stop. But when they found out that they're spending $700 more a month every month since Donald J. Trump, but getting less, people finally got fed up. And yes, I believe that has transcended all lines. Uh, Even in the gay community, they don't believe predominantly should be like teaching kids about anal sex in kindergarten and stuff. There's so many egregious violations that happen that people are walking away from it. And this always happens. This is a sign of when you have a selected, not elected, 
mail order maladministration sitting in the White House or sitting in any country, all of a sudden, all these fires in all areas start going because it's a free for all because it's maladministration. It's a bad gig. When all of that evil and all of that crap comes out, people finally start to pay attention when it hits close to home. And they're saying, I did not sign up for this. We got to get out of it. Let's go back to our old country, which is, in fact, well, making America great again. Yeah. Dur during the lockdown, I, I said to my wife, you know, like they're really pushing people to the brink of like going crazy, this mass psychosis, totally gaslighting us about masks and distancing and, and shots. And then, you know, the, the truth has come out. But I told my wife, if the Internet goes down, you're going to see people go absolutely berserk. That's right. right? Gratefully, the Internet didn't go down. But that was one of my predictions. The other prediction that I told my wife is I said, when when people realize how expensive life has become under Biden, nothing else is going to matter because people want to live. There's people panicking about paying their bills. That's right. And, and, and that's, you know, just a big thing. But my worry is, you know, this Dom Luker, very famous, he's saying a red wave. We, we heard that in 2022. Um, and then it didn't really materialize. It's a red, white, and blue wave. It has nothing to do with whether you're a Republican and certainly nothing to do whether you're a Democrat. It has all to do with, are you an American first? And do you love your American freedoms, value, liberty, et cetera? So it is, in fact, a red, white, and blue awakening and wave. Okay. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Um, well, just yesterday, uh, Donald Trump said in an interview He's not even planning anymore for Joe Biden to be the candidate in November. So like behind the scenes, they're they're preparing for it to not be Biden. Um, it's an interesting prediction. But could Democrats pump up a new person uh, with this little amount of time uh, before the election? Or do they just have confidence that they can pull magic levers and get enough ballot images to get their party to remain in power? I think what is more likely to not than not to happen based on what they're seeing, they're going to sacrifice Joe and Hunter. So they look like we won't tolerate this crap. And you might see a throw up of Gavin Newsom and Michelle Obama. Interesting. Yeah. That, that, that's uh, uh, the other thing that I was thinking was maybe people like Mark uh, Elias, the attorney for Hillary Clinton, that basically upended the the election by changing, you know, so many laws. Maybe he goes, you know what, just give it to Trump at this point and we'll spend the next five years changing all the election laws so that Republicans can never win after Donald Trump ever again. That's it, their plan that B. You, you, you bet that's going on. It's going on already. Don't doubt that one. You're not like uh, Psychic Friends Network and saying that. They're doing that now. They always have multiple backup plans, and that is one of them. Because I had a guest um, a couple of days ago that said, well, you know, the RNC has a thousand attorneys ready to go on election day. I said, it doesn't matter. Mark Mark Elias and um, what's his name? Norm Eisen. Those those guys, they, they are literally lining up lawsuits. They have been changing the laws. They've already drafted almost a dozen impeachments against Trump just in case he gets in. I mean, like these guys have an arsenal of lawfare ready to go. It's a it's time difference. Fine. The GOP thinks, oh, we're going to have attorneys. We're going to have hotline. We've got a thousand attorneys. Memo. It's too late if you have to sue and fight for it after the fact. What has Elias and them done? They planned for it for years. They've already been working and doing it to ensure they get to their path. So I don't think it's a bright, uh, bright idea of anybody saying, oh, we got attorneys ready. How'd that work out in 2020 or 2022? Well, like you said, they they just ran out the clock, um, and um, I mean, like the 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 Pennsylvania is a great example, right? Three years later, they go, wait a minute, a hundred thousand of these ballots have no date or a bad date or or were dated after election day, and they still counted them. But meanwhile, Biden has been in office for over three years. It was it was too little, too late. Um, it works more like this. Everybody knew, Democrats and GOP included, 
Democrats did what they were going to do, raping and getting as much money for them and the GOP as they could. They played like they didn't know. And all of a sudden they're waking up and going, oh, my God, three and a half years later. So now they can play like, we've got to fix this. All a game, all a charade. We have a uniparty. The only people that are going to fix this are you, the voter, the citizens. And that means you have to understand how this stuff is done. You have to become the smartest patriot in the room. And you've got to understand you are the one that wields the power. And when you can instruct your lawmakers properly, when you can articulate, here's what's wrong and here's what I want fixed, we'll get it done. But if you keep on relying on lawmakers to do it, well, we'll be socialists and you better start learning Mandarin real quick. Yeah, that's that's my worry. Um, I, I'm going to put a link down below, Joe Vaughn, to your new book, Countdown to Chaos. I want people to go check that out. But tell, Here, tell my audience. Thing, but by the way, since you mentioned it, it's a year to the date as we're recording this that I released that book on hard in hardback. Now it's available both in softback and in Kindle form. So when you do that link, now you can get any format you want. Oh, that's awesome. That does actually make it helpful. Um, but what, what I want to do is uh, tell people about your Rumble show so that they can uh, keep up to date with you. Seven days a week, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I broadcast my show, weird name, Cut the Crap. But crap is merely an acronym that stands for Culture, Race, and American Politics. I named it that because every one of us want to grab these politicians by the lapel and go, cut the crap. And so we all get together as family and friends. We discuss what's going on, how they do it to us to make you the smartest patriot in the room. And so that's on Rumble, rumble.com forward slash Jovan Hutton Pulitzer, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., seven days a week. Remember it in Central Standard Time because it's 777, and we're lucky we can all get together and discuss this openly. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. I'm going to put a direct link down below. Thank you so much for coming on, helping us better understand what's going on in Georgia, uh, this red, white, and blue wave. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you much.